Okay, well, um, so I thought I would spend a good bit of today's class going over uh, this homework assignment. Um, if you've sent it in, fine. If not, get it in. Um, but I just thought I'd go ahead and start working through some of this stuff. Just to, um, a lot of it I think is pretty straightforward, but some of it, some of it you really have to kind of scratch your head and kind of kind of get in the weeds on your own because um, the uh, measure tool is not going to do all of this for you, unfortunately. So let me see here. I got a thousand files open, um, and I apologize. <laughs> especially after the presentation we just had. I apologize for what this looks like. Um, I, I would not show this to my boss, but this I threw together um, just to try to lead us through this discussion. And uh, let's see, I don't even think, I don't think I've opened the homework assignment. I guess I probably should do that. Uh, let's see if I can get that open. There it is. Okay, so I think everybody's probably pretty hopefully familiar with the input information. I mean, we can go back and uh, look uh, through this if we need to, but let's go down with the things that were requested. Okay, so the first um, stack loss reduction and uh, but we're 8.1%, we're 525 on stack temperature, we're 85 on ambient temperature. Okay, so, yeah, yeah, that's where I'm going here. I'm just gonna, there, there's a summary of it, and that's what I came up with for the uh, original stack loss was, um, 23.4%, and we'll, we'll pull up measure here in a second, but let me just uh, keep bouncing about any more than necessary. So then I put a half percent for shell loss, just an estimate. Now, I, I mean, if I, if I was out there doing this and I wanted to take my infrared camera and take measurements and uh, calculate the area of that boiler and try to calculate what I actually think the heat transfer loss rate is, I can certainly do that. Um, is that justified? Maybe, probably not, to be honest with you, unless there's something strange going on. You see something that you think is just really not right, then you might want to dig a little bit deeper. But at any rate, you probably should have some sort of an accommodation for shell loss. Okay, so we got hopefully a pretty good number on stack loss. And I think I made the comment earlier, blowdown is actually modeled in measure. So you don't, you don't calculate a blowdown loss and adjust the boiler efficiency for it. So we say uh, here, I've got my initial boiler efficiency at 76.1%, okay? Uh, so let me, um, let me see here, where's my, yeah, there you go. And uh, that's my result. And then but we're, we'll go to the measure tool. So then I went back a second time to calculate my stack loss with the same temperatures and 5% O2 oxygen, which is reducing the amount of excess air, the amount of air that's just blown through the system, comes in cold, goes up hot, you know. And so uh, I got 21.2% and then the 5% for shell loss. So what was it, 76.1 and then the efficiency improves to uh, 78.3. Make sure that's right. Yeah, 76.1. Okay, so if I pull up measure, I mean, I've got a thousand and one things in here like you do. <laughs> so I'm gonna check because I think I think I have to readjust my boiler efficiency here. So let's see, that's the, just on, on the system setup, you gotta go through this to get your base case and operations. Uh, I think that's all okay. Nothing changed there, but boiler here. Yeah, I want this, if 
for this initial run, I want this to be 76.1. Okay. Now, let me go to my da, 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 assessment. And let's look at scenarios. Okay, so this is the first one, tune boiler of 5%. So, okay, 76.1 going to uh, 78.3. Hopefully, nothing other. You know, when you got a lot of these things, sometimes you wind up running numbers that you don't think you're running. So it's always good to, you know, take a little time and make sure, but I think that's correct. I can check the header here. Look at my pressures, 420,000 pounds an hour, 75% condensate return, condensate return temperature. And you know, I have told Oak Ridge about this. So they list this condensate return temperature up here under the high pressure header. And this is really what goes back to the deaerator. Why they list that under the high pressure header, I have no idea. It doesn't make any sense. I've told them that a couple of times and they've never chosen to move it, but they need to. Because that's, it's, I mean, it's just misleading. It really shouldn't be there. But anyway, it is. Uh, we're not recovering any fly steam, heat loss. I didn't modify those numbers. Uh, pressure, medium pressure 180, uh, 75,000 pounds an hour, 50% condensate return, all this. So I think this all looks Base, basically correct. I don't want to just bore you to death with it. Um, the numbers should be the same over here on this side because all I want this to be is a change in uh, boiler efficiency and I don't have any turbines. Okay, so if I look at report, so that's tuned the boiler. So let's see, this is showing 170,776 on fuel and that's it. So I'm getting about 171,000 now. Let's, let's see if this is what I got the last time I did it. <laughs> it's always possible to get different answers. I don't know. If you do it right, maybe not. Uh, let's see, reduce the now. I went too far, didn't I? Yeah, there it is. So that's what I got last time. And at roughly, all you're gonna do is call a company to come in and adjust, make adjustments on the boiler. They might be there a half a day, at most a day. I mean, $5,000 is probably way too much. But anyway, you've got so much in savings. What the heck, this is 0.35 months. And no, I didn't get around to running my internal rate of return. Bad instructor, bad instructor. I will do that, but. I tell you, I sat down yesterday to do this and I thought I was gonna run through this in about a, a couple of hours. And you know what? It, I couldn't do that. <laughs> I was a little too egotistical about how quickly I could get all this done. I was scrambling in there before I came in here, scribbling down the last couple of notes on my paper here to run down and scan it. So anyway, okay. So hopefully you got something in that ballpark. Then number two, now I'm gonna go through the same procedure, but I'm gonna set that, what was it, 78.3% or something uh, as my base case, and then I'm gonna reduce it further in order to see uh, what the automatic control system, you know, how much money could I save with automatic control system. So I'm gonna take the O2 to 2%. Oh, and I, I didn't do the uh, calculator. We'll, we'll do that here in a second too. Um, but so I'm gonna keep the temperatures the same and I'm gonna take the oxygen down to uh, 2%. Hopefully it's gonna show me a stack loss at 19.8%, the shell loss. So this is gonna get my boiler efficiency up to 79.7%. And I, when I ran it last time, I got about 103,767 in savings. Uh, let's see, so let's go back to assessment, the calculators. Uh, this is the one that's in there 
for the economizer. Yeah, so 5%, if I change this to, um, was it 525, then I got 21.2. And if I change this to two, I got 19.8. So if you played around with this at all, I mean, wow, this is, this is like playing video games, man. There, there's, you know, it's, but, 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 you are, but you're doing some serious engineering, but it doesn't have to be grunt, groan, and strain. All. I mean, sometimes there's tools out there that make your life easy. And this is uh, one of those cases. Okay, so let's go to this scenario, what I have in here. So this is going to 2%. Uh, let's see. So, see, this is the low. So this one, see, that, that's where you gotta be careful when you start changing this stuff. Cause see, that 76.1 is the 8.1% oxygen. So see, that's not right. That's gonna give me too much savings. So, uh, I can't remember my memory shot. So I gotta go back up to this one. And I'm gonna get, yeah, 78.3. That's what I was thinking, but I wanted to be sure. So I gotta go back up here and I gotta change this to 78.3. Now, I should be good. Uh, and the other thing, I don't know if you spent much time looking at, we should be looking at these diagrams too. So when you click the diagram, you got a pull down menu. And so this is the base case model. And then you got a pull down and you can look at any one of the models that you have created in here. So on the one where I, so you, and you can look over here. Uh, let's see, if you click on boiler, it gives you all the details on the boiler. It's saying blow down rate, boiler energy, all this sort of thing. You can copy it, you can, it's, I mean, they've, they've come a long ways. This, thing, this thing's not bad. Okay, and then if I go to say tune to 2%, you know, the only thing that's gonna say, the, the energy, um, the energy should go down. But anyway, so this one's not real exciting because we haven't really added any components or anything. Okay, so let's go uh, report. And that's what, yeah. So the second one now is 103.767. Seven, 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 seven. Now see, this one is now zero because I made the 5% my base case. So this one is running 5% versus 5%. So it's not gonna show anything at this point. Okay. So this run is good for looking at this column. Uh, let's see, let's see, where am I going? Okay, so we got the, this one. Okay, so this one's a little more costly. It's probably roughly $100,000 to replace the boiler control system. I mean, depending which one you buy and what the bid comes in. I mean, it could be probably 80, 85, or it could be 125. But anyway, so, you know, at this, at this level, we're just trying to put in a good representative number. So that gives me about a one year payback. That's pretty good investment. You get your money back in one year. So that's not bad. Okay, now this one, uh, same sort of thing. Uh, we simply set the oxygen at 5%. And, and so this would be common in a scenario because you're not sure, you're not sure that they're gonna buy the control system. And I, I mean, and it's possible they may come back and ask you, okay, we want you to run this. We're gonna do the control system and we want you to reevaluate the economizer because the savings are gonna go down a little bit because you've changed, because your, your O2 is, is then 2% instead of 5%. And so that'll affect the numbers a little bit on the economizer. Okay. But anyway, if we set the oxygen on uh, 5% and we're just gonna reduce that, uh, stack temperature from 525 to 275, keep the ambient temperature at 85, 
then that stock loss will go down to 14.7. Wow, that's pretty significant improvement. And so the shell loss uh, with that, so the boiler efficiency now, we're pushing 85%, which is pr pretty close to as good as, without a condensing economizer, that's pretty close to as good as you're gonna get on natural gas. I mean, a, a big utility company, perhaps, that has just all kinds of bells and whistles built in, but for an industrial steam system, 84.8, pretty darn good. That's nothing to, to sneeze at. Um, the simulation came back uh, 452,801. And so this is pretty, let me see, so I gotta remember this. So this is uh, 80, 84.8, so. Assessment, scenarios. Yeah, okay. This one looks right. Mm -hmm. Yep, 252, 801. That's the same number. Okay. Okay, and then the final case, um, we want to run the whole shebang. And so it would make sense to take this back to the 8.1%. Uh, so, so you can run the base case on this boiler efficiency at 76.1. And that will show you, it, you know, from where you walked in the door, if you did all of this stuff, how much would you save? Okay. So, uh, all modification. Okay, so now we got to take this 76.1. Whoops, that's not very good. Uh, let's see, all modifications. Fuel cost savings, 623,577. And it's all natural gas. So, let's see if that jives. Yep, 577. I said to use, I guess, 500,000. I don't know, it might be more than that, whatever. Uh, so, less than a year, someplace around a year payback. Pretty darn good projects. Okay, let's go to uh, blow down energy recovery. And I want to set that. Uh, now, I think we said to go ahead and assume that the boiler had been tuned. So we got to set, well, let me call up the, right, the scenario I want. We're going to do, we're going to do the flash tank first. And I'm going to, I think this was 78.3. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's see. So boiler, let's see. Where is this? Yeah, it's right here. Yeah, is blow down flashed? No, yes. And so let's look on the diagram. And so that's just our standard uh, diagram that we had before. And so let's put the blow down flash to low pressure header. Aha. And so now what's going to happen is see, here's our blow down coming out of the boiler. Uh, 11,060 pounds mass per hour, saturated water at um, 400, 414.7 PSI A, 400 PSI G. We're gonna put it into this flash tank and we're gonna connect the flash tank to the 30 pound header. So then we will flash 
uh, this says 2,200 pounds an hour, so uh, that we're going to feed into this. Where previously we were just throwing that away. Okay, see this blowdown, if I, if I don't connect it to a flash tank or heat exchanger, this blowdown is going to sewer. It's gone. So 2,200 pounds an hour, well, that's a fair amount of steam. Now, let's see, do they have a flash steam calculator on here? Yeah, flash tank, well, flash tank. So you could do it, you can do this. So uh, pressure 400, quality, it's saturated liquid, now nah, what do we want? Oh, we can do quality, that's fine. Quality is zero. Mass flow was what? 11.060. Tank pressure would be 30. Mm. So steam out. Mass flow 2203.55. And so in the model, when it shows in the model, it's round and off, you know, to like one decimal point. So that's 2.2 thousand pounds an hour, 2203.5. So that, that's, that, I mean, that's the process that's going on. Uh, so we can look at report. Mm. Uh, flash blow down to low pressure header. Okay, so this is saving natural gas, uh, 102,821, and we're getting almost $14,000 in water savings because that's, you know, that steam is water that was being thrown away, so that stays in the system, so we don't have to, you know, buy as much makeup water. Okay. And so if we go back to, here. Okay, install. So, yeah, those look like the same numbers. So that total is about 16,800. Um, oh, you could do that for $100,000, for sure. Those blowdown flash tanks are not terribly big. I mean, they has to be pressure rated, but, uh, you know, some piping and all that sort of thing. Um, that's a that's a really nice project if you were if you were throwing away all of that flash steam out of the blowdown. Okay. So next we want to install a heat exchanger. So now for B, we take the flash tank out and we just do the heat exchanger because you want to because you know the heat exchanger is going to cost more, probably a whole lot more than ten thousand dollars more than the flash tank. But you know it depends on the size and you know. Depends on the labor. I mean, yeah, a lot of stuff. But I would expect that the um, heat exchanger would um, cost considerably more than the flash tank. Okay, so back to measure. And so let's do assessment. Add scenario. Okay, so I turn off the flash tank and I turn on the heat exchanger. Wow, that was hard. <laughs> that was two whole clicks. And so we can go to the diagram. Uh, heat exchanger. Uh, make it smaller. Go down liquid heat exchanger. Well, where is it? <laughs> Oh, there it is. I'm not, I haven't used measure all that much. Yeah, it's right there, isn't it? Yep, sure is. Let's see, yeah, so I've got um, 70 degree water coming in and 128.26 degree water out. There you go. So, and the other thing you know, what's gonna happen is my DA steam is going down. So see, in this case, I should have pointed that out before. My DA steam is 10,290. If I go back to uh, just say, uh, uh, 
let's see which one do I want to go to uh, let's let's do this one yeah say 14,500 so see that's where I'm saving money I'm putting hotter water in the DA the DA doesn't have to uh, use as much steam So which one? Liquid heat exchange. Now, okay, there's questions about approach temperature. And so I didn't purposely didn't give you a lot. This has to do with the sizing of the heat exchanger. So we've got 440 degree water coming out of that steam drum. Okay, and we've got 70 degree water coming in from the water softeners. Okay, and so this approach is the difference between the blowdown heat exchanger cold inlet and the hot outlet. So that four, 440 something comes in, how cold are we gonna get it in terms of this 70 degree water coming in? You know, I mean, I can get, if I buy a big enough heat exchanger, I can get it down to one degree, a half degree. Now that daggum thing may run from this wall to this wall, and it may cost a million two, but I mean, I can do it. It's just a matter of getting a more surface area in order to transfer heat across a metal wall. Well, that's all we're doing in a heat exchanger. So, you know, um, the, I, I use 20 because the old SSAT program used to used to default. Well, in fact, and, and that's where they got this. This defaults to, I, I think this defaults to 20, or I may have put it in there. But I mean, it could be five, it could be 10, it could be 15, it could be 20. It's probably not going to be a whole lot bigger than 20 or 25, something like that. I mean, come on, you can because you've got such a big temperature difference you ought to be able to cool down that 400 and something degree water. This is saying that that blow down stream is gonna leave at 90 degrees. So we're gonna take all of the energy in the liquid blow down from the temperature that's coming out of the boiler, 440, whatever it is, uh, down to 90 degrees. And we're gonna take that energy and we're gonna dump it into that makeup water. So that's what's going on. Okay. Report. Liquid. So I'm getting 165, almost $166,000 out of this. And say the water savings are not much. And the water savings are because I'm making less steam. I'm putting less in the deaerator. So my, so I have to make less steam overall. And so that saves me some water because I'm not returning all of my condensate uh, to the system. So we'll go back over here. Okay. So, no, that's about there it is. 165, 899, 2153, I got 168,110. Still, darn good project. And then, you know, you go back again and you just run them both together. And you get this. But say, you know, I can get 165. If I can get well, I get 168,000 for $110,000. I only I'm only picking up what 182, you know. What is that? 10 that 14,000 something like that additional savings by going by adding the flash tank. So on this one the boss might say, "Why don't we just skip the flash tank?" Okay. Because you can get you can get most of the savings, and you can save a hundred thousand dollars. Now you got to see what the actual cost 
you know, if you, if you get a real estimate, you can see what it really costs. That's why you do the analysis. Uh, let's see, what do we got? Okay, cogen, ah, let's add some turbines. Okay, so 55% isentropic efficiency. We're going back to the 78.3% boiler efficiency to 5% oxygen. And we're not sure they're gonna put in a feed water economizer. You know, they might. And so, you know, depending on some of those decisions, you might have to come back and reevaluate some of this stuff. Okay, so let's see, we can look at the boiler and make sure 78.3, 78.3, all that looks right. Header, yeah, I, don't, I think that's all the same. And then turbine, okay, so I mean, it's pretty hard to check the box. Uh, generator efficiency, I, I should have given you a number. It suggests here 95%, so I took that. That's probably a good number. And now you do have different control modes. I didn't say anything about this, but what, what you really want to do is you just want to balance the header. Instead of putting steam through the PRV, if you look on, uh, let's do the, uh, let's do this guy. Okay. Because this is the right boiler efficiency. So say up here, I've got, almost 130,000 pounds an hour going through a PRV. Wow, that's a lot of exergy destruction. I'm throwing away the potential to put that through a turbine and turn a pump, turn an air compressor, or turn a generator and get some useful energy out of it. Okay. Now you also note that I'm um, what, 149,000, basically 500 pounds an hour on my steam production, okay? Then I've got through the second PRV, going from the medium pressure to low pressure header, I've got um, 54,490 pounds an hour. So say that's where, that's where the potential is. Now what's gonna happen, I'm gonna put those turbines in and they're gonna take some energy out. And so I have to deliver, this is the energy being delivered to the headers. So say I have to still, I'm sorry here, this one is 15.5 uh, uh, million BTUs an hour, 63.7 and uh, 30, 38.3. That has to stay the same. When I start taking energy out with a turbine, then you'll see these steam flow rates go up a little bit and I have to make some more over here, which requires more boiler fuel, okay? So let's see. Uh, let's look at the, there we go. So, say my total steam production is up to 155,200. My steam flow to this medium pressure is now 75, it's 78.15. And that's because the, I'm keeping the energy the same but the steam has less energy in the header, so I have to provide more steam to get the same heat to the process, okay? Uh, and so I can look at report. Uh, let's see, blow down, here we go. Star HP, yeah, here we go. So, you'll see here, uh, savings in electricity, $790,000 a year, significant. Extra fuel cost, $225,500 a year, because I'm making more steam. And when I make more steam, it requires more water because I still have the same condensate re return percentages. So it's also an extra $7,800 in water. So my total savings out the door 
for this guy, 460,315. Uh, well, that sure didn't agree, did it? Huh. Well, okay. Something's not consistent with what I did previously. Let's go back and look. Let's go look. It's easy to, I don't know if I had a hitch in my get, a, get along this time or that time. All looks pretty right. Suspect. Looks like I could just look at it here. Yeah, I'm not really seeing anything now. I don't, I'm not sure. I'm not sure why I'm getting different numbers now than I wrote down. It's moving pretty quick. Ah, there it is. I think I, I think oh, I was just reading the wrong column. I'm sorry. This is the column. This is high pressure, medium pressure. So uh, I got a total of uh, 550. Is that what I had over here? Yeah, okay. It's consistent. I just read the wrong column. Okay, so, um, well, if you go back over here for just a second, uh, if you go to the energy summary, uh, let's see, you can see the, uh, generation. So we're going to generate almost 1300 kW. So I, I just, for my cost, I went ahead and rounded it to 1300. doesn't matter. You can use the 1289.8, but, uh, or another place you can see it. If you go to the uh, diagram, it'll show you by the turbine. So it'll show you right there. And again, you can click on this and then you can get details, the thermodynamic details on the operation of the turbine, which is real nice. I mean, you know, you can do all this by hand, but it sure is nice to just click a button and it's there. Okay. So that gets us to this one. Now we want to install the medium pressure, low pressure turbine. So basically, you know, we just uh, turn it on, turn the other one off. So that's MPLP. And if you look on the diagram, MPLP. So now this one disappears. <laughs> And uh, so you see up here, we're putting 133,000 pounds an hour through this PRV, but we're not putting anything through this one because it all goes through the turbine. And that gets me about 1,028, almost 1,029 kW. And so this header flow is back to 75 because there, you know, we don't have a turbine here. This is PRV, that's constant enthalpy across here. But this one, uh, has gone up from 40 to 42,810 because of the energy taken out by the turbine. And so that's this guy, this one right here. So that's 460,000. Let's just uh, 
look at all the turbines and well, I'm going to look at the so then if I put them both in uh, diagram now I've got them both in operation and report <clears throat> about a million thirty two thousand net savings uh, power cost a million four fifty one fuel cost three hundred and ninety five thousand additional water cost twenty three thousand additional okay so this was just the medium pressure low pressure it's about 1050, about 1.575 million, 3.42 years. You do them both, you get these numbers. It's about 2400 KW at 1500 each, 3.6 million. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna do this, uh, I'm gonna do this last because when you start screwing around with that boiler pressure, you gotta get got to make a bunch of changes. So let's just pass that right now. I did get, um, I got about 2 million savings from that. You get a whole lot, you get more power for sure. It makes the project about 7 million with about a three and a half year payback. We'll go back to that. Okay, steam trap. So uh, let's see here. I did a little sheet, Excel sheet on this one. And I, I think there's room for some flexibility. I mean, when you're trying to predict failed steam traps, I mean, you know, you got a number like 2%. That's, to, that's an across the board number. You could go five years and have no steam traps fail. Or you could go five years and have 20% of your steam traps fail, you know. But, you know, you gotta have, for, for an assignment like this, you gotta have some way to base it on. So. What I did, um, I, whoops, no, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, so this is total number of traps at each pressure. And then I did a little calculation here. So I used the round function. And so for the first year, I started with these numbers up here. So here I've got uh, 15 traps and I said, times 2%, that's what, 0 0.02. If you multiply that out, 15 times 0 0.02, that's 0.3. So you get three tenths of a trap fails every year. Well, and then I'm rounding to one, the nearest whole number. And so I'm gonna get zero every year on that one with that calculation. So what I did down at the bottom, I just said, Oh, what the heck, I'm just gonna assign one. <laughs> because if I had three tenths, three tenths of a year times five years, that's one and a half traps. So I could have picked one or two, I guess, and been okay. Anyway, when you do this same math, now I'm taking uh, G4, which is 30 times 0.02. That's 0.6, and so that rounds to one. And then what I did the next year is I took G4 minus this one, so then I only had 29 good ones, and I took 2% of that. Well, I mean, so any other, this comes out with one, and, yeah, and I keep subtracting them off, but it didn't matter. It came up with one a year. So for my analysis, I did one high pressure, five medium pressure, and five low pressure. So you needed to have some number of failed traps, okay. Then we've got Napier's equation, <clears throat> which is, uh, what is it, point five five one four three times the area in square inches times the steam pressure in PSIA. 
And then if, if you assume a sharp edged orifice, you take 60% of that. That's the game with Napier's equations here. Ah, let me see, I think I even have that open someplace. Steam trap survey guide. Yeah, here's Napier's equation right here. That's equation 56 in steam system survey guide. So I've just plugged into that and I went ahead and took 60% of it because you don't know, there's no way to know, but you know, the philosophy is let's under predict and over perform. So if I take the 60%, I'm being conservative in my projections to my boss. And so if it turns out we save almost twice as much, I look that much better. But if it turns out that the 60% is correct, then I didn't over project savings. So that would be my philosophy on it. Uh, okay. So that's my uh, orifice size. Number bad, loss per trap. So uh, that's point five one four three times 0. 0.6 for the sharp edged orifice times pi uh, d squared over four to get inches times the pressure uh, which on that high pressure is 414.7. So for the individual traps, the high pressure I got four, uh, 628, I got about 295, and I got about 68. That's pounds per hour. And then multiply by the number of traps. So one here, five here, and five here. And then I said project that you can save 75% of this. So 75% <clears throat> is 471, 1105, and 254. And then I ran a steam demand project in measure, and I like I reduced the high pressure steam demand by, and they want K pounds, so it's 0 0.471. And then it's point one or 1.106, and it's point what, two five four. So that was my approach. So I'll go back to assessment scenario. What's there? Uh, fixed steam traps. Okay, and so there you go. Yes, sir. What, what did I say? Did I not read my own assignment? <laughs> it's quite possible. Um, the steam trap loss rate. Well, but if it, it's, re, it, so the 25% still remains. But see what we're, we're gonna, we're, we're doing a steam reduction. Well, so we've reduced the loss by 75% of the total. So I'm reducing my steam demand by 75%, which lets 25% of it is still in there. Yeah, but yours wasn't it still like had 75? I thought it was the other way with what you had left over. I may have just been looking at it wrong. Oh, oh well, that's possible. I, I mean, like I said, this took, I was moving pretty fast this morning. <laughs> oh, I don't know. You're not supposed to catch that kind of crap. Now that's 75% of it. So that shows how much uh, uh, well it says total. Well, okay, so this should say it's the heading that's wrong. Right? Because look, I mean that's 75% of it. And it's gonna go down by 75%. Yeah, that's the amount that it's going to go down. I, I agree. Uh, I agree. The uh, this should say how about uh, 
Is that better? Okay, I'm sorry. You're right about that, for sure. Oh, it's quite possible I could have screwed it up. I mean, I was, I was moving this morning, trying to get all this done. Okay, so at any rate, whatever amount we're going to save, we reduce. We were making 20,000 pounds an hour, and those trap losses are part of that 20,000 pounds. We're saving it's process load, but that goes out in the, goes to the process, but where are the traps? They're in the process, and they're out there blowing steam. So when I fix a trap, my process load goes down. And so I calculate, I'm, I, I'm saying that I can, I, I can save 75% of what I'm blowing away right now. And so I've reduced my steam demand there, there, and there. And whether I reduced it the, amount, the right amount, I don't know, but I hope I did. I think I did. Uh, so if I look at report, uh, to, 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 to fix uh, steam traps. Uh, so this is, uh, what, 80,000? on uh, natural gas and 5,400 on water. Not bad, not bad at all. Uh, let's see, not this one, let's go this one. Okay. So I, for mine, I had 11 failed traps, 800 bucks each, eight, $8,800, 1.23 months, wow. That's worth, that's worth doing for sure. Okay, now the fun one. Okay, I'm still, I'll be honest with you, I'm not finished this. This is, um, there's different ways you can think about this. Let's get to five. Okay, so what you're told, I believe, let's go, let's go up here. Condensate is returned to an atmospheric, that means atmospheric pressure, condensate return tank at 240. The flash steam is currently vented to atmosphere. So now, this model cannot simulate this, okay? We can't put that, let's go back to measure and look at a diagram. Uh, let's look at this one. Okay, so what this is doing, this is taking our 240, this is all our condensate, and it's 78,500 pounds an hour and it's running it directly back into the DA tank. There's no flash. And there's no way to turn on a flash tank for that. It's not built into the program. But it's very common to see that scenario out there in the world. A lot of people will bring that hot condensate back to the boiler house. They'll pump it into a big tank and the flash is just billowing out of the top of that tank and then, and that drops the temperature immediately to 212 degrees, and then they'll pump 212 degree water back and the flash is gone. So, I'm, because I've seen this multiple times, I'm gonna say, hey, we need to do something about this. Well, okay, so, so let, let's remember that, uh, that flow rate, 78,500. Let's go to the calculator and let's play around for a minute. Calculators, flash tank. Okay. So that's coming, we would say that's 30 PSI. And quality would be zero, it's all liquid. And zero, and it was. 78500. And let's say if we're taking it to zero, 
Okay, so how much are they losing? They're losing 58, 58 pounds an hour. Hmm. Okay, well, where, where can we take this? Where can we use this in our system? What's our lowest pressure use for steam? It's a deaerator, right? It's 12 pounds. Okay, well, let's see what happens. What if I just basically had a pressurized tank and I piped that up and I took that steam into the deaerator? I mean, it might have to get to 13 or 14 pounds before it had enough oomph to get in there, you know. So let's say, let's just, let's just play, let's say I'm going to take it to 14. Hmm. Okay. I still, I've got 25, 25, 76. If I said 12, I'm 29. Well, what if I want to take it to the, um, oh, let's see here, temperature. We got another issue here. Uh, we got another problem. Look at this. This is assuming that this is saturated hmm. at 30. I'm not saturated. I'm only 240. Um, I may have a little hitch in my get along here. So let's go back and let's look. Uh, do I have enough stuff open? <laughs> uh, what are you doing? Uh, what is this? Oh, I have to. This is something. Ah, okay. Well, okay. So, uh, let's see. So, pressure here. Let's see. If, whoops. Hello. It'll work. Yeah, I better close this and reopen it. <laughs> Hello. Oh, I think I was clicking the wrong side of the mouse. That's not unusual. Okay, so you, English units. So if it's 30, it would be what? Add 14 to it. So it's what? 40, 44.7, right? Yeah. Calculate. Yeah, I see my saturation temperature is this. So let me come down here and put 240. Calculate. So um, I'm a little bit subcooled, right? Yeah. So I need to take that into consideration in my example. So let's go to two phase here. Uh, let's, uh, let's do uh, superheated subcool. There we go, that's what I want. So I want temperature 240 and pressure seven. Calculate, yeah, I'm subcooled and there's my enthalpy. 208.532. So I need to do a calculation and figure out a couple of things. First of all, I mean, the question says you're flashing it to atmospheric pressure. So, well, okay, and we can use the calculator. Let's use this calculator, okay. So let's see. Uh, so we'll say we're saturated. So we got to remember that enthalpy, 208.532. So let's go saturated. Uh, I want two phase. Uh, I want 
temperature two phase. Well, you got to do this. I think you got to do this trial and error. Zero point nine on this. Oh yeah, it's going to be two forty. Oh no, that's not right. I'm sorry. Pressure. Pressure 14.7, 240 at Cesium. Enthalpy. X. Well, I'm not saying an easy way to to get this out of this calculator. But what you have to do is just do a flash steam calculation based on that 205 as the enthalpy that's going into that flash tank. So you can do that or you, you maybe you can find a flash steam calculator online. So that's the amount that's going to atmosphere. But then when you, when, when, when you, if you're going to take it someplace useful, you're not going to get, well, if you try to do it with flash, you're going to get less and less flash steam as you try to raise that pressure. So I'm doing a lot of hemming and hawing here. Let me show you a couple of options. I think that Let's see here. You remember the old thermal compressor from your reading? Let's see where that fucking go. Ah, here we go. What was the purpose of a thermal compressor? Thermal compressors combine high pressure and low pressure steam to form intermediate pressure uh, steam supply. Often the low pressure steam does not have enough energy to be feasibly used. However, discharging it to the condensate return system may be an unnecessary energy loss, or in this case, we're throwing it to the atmosphere. Thermal compressors use high pressure steam source to recover the energy from this low pressure source, providing intermediate steam supply that can be feasibly used. So, if we, if this suction, this low pressure, we could set that right on top of that atmospheric pressure tank. And so this thing is like a Venturi. You put higher pressure steam in the end of this thing, it blows through there, and it sucks that low pressure steam in, in with it, and the discharge is an intermediate pressure that's high enough to be useful. That sounds like something we could use in this situation, doesn't it? If we got 5,000 pounds or something, or 4,000 or 3,000 pounds of steam that's consistently being flashed to atmosphere, we might have a project here, okay? So what will we use for motor steam? Well, we've got three different headers. We've got 30 pound, we've got 180 pound, and we've got 400 pounds. So we've got some high, we got high enough pressure steam to make this work. Well, where would we like to take this steam that's being flashed? Where would be the, probably the, the most advantageous place to take it? The 30 pound header. That would be a really good idea. Well, if I got 180 pound intermediate pressure steam, can I not put that in the end of this thing to boost the pressure of this zero PSIG steam to 30 or 32, high enough to get it into the header? I certainly ought to be able to. So this is one option. Well, now let's look into this. So I have done some of this. I've got some more literature on this, but this was the best I could come up with. So. Okay, you can just Google thermal compressor sizing and this, this cadence, man, they're, they're all over the uh, internet with this stuff. And so what they've got is they've got some curves down here. 
compressor entrainment. And so they've got this compression ratio, they've got an entrainment ratio, and they've got this, uh, what is this E? I forget. <laughs> the expansion ratio. And they've even got a little example here. Oh, this is pretty interesting. So this is their nomenclature. P, atmospheric pressure, 14.7. PM, motive steam. That's the high pressure steam that goes into the thermal compressor. PS, the suction steam. That's the low pressure steam. Uh, PD, that's the discharge pressure. Uh, M sub M, motive steam flow rate, suction steam flow rate, discharge total steam flow rate, expansion ratio, P sub M, that's the motive, so that's the high pressure uh, divided by the low pressure, that's the inlet, should be over 1.4, it has a compression ratio, normally less than 1.8, and an entrainment ratio. So here's, here's uh, they've got an example problem. These guys, they went through engineering school, right? They're, they're, they gave you an example problem. That's what we all look for. So expansion ratio in this case, the motive steam is 85 PSIG, so that's 99.7. And the suction is five. So when you put it with atmospheric, it's 19.7. So you form that ratio and it's five, a little over five, 5.06. Compression ratio is the discharge that you want. So I guess we're gonna discharge it at 11. That sure does look like it's going to, to a deaerator. Probably a deaerator operating at nine or 10 pounds would be my guess. Um, so that's the 25.7 divided by the suction. So that's 1.3 using these. So then you come to the graph. So we got five and 1.3. So here's five and you got 1.3. And so you read up and over. Ah, get out of that stupid thing. I'd say they picked it. Is that five? No, this one's five. It looks like it's there if I got my numbers right. And so you pick this uh, entrainment ratio. Yeah, he got one and a half, which looks about right. Three, one and a half. Yeah, that's about right. Okay. <clears throat> So let's see, the motive steam is the low pressure steam divided by that. So we need 13,333 pounds of your 85 PSIG steam. And then your total discharge steam is the sum of those. And they've even got a sizing chart down here. So this is one possibility. If I was really interested in this, I would call up Cadence <laughs> and I would give them all my numbers. I'd say, here, you guys are the experts. Oh man, am I out of time? I'm just getting on a roll. Uh, help me with this. The other thing you could do, and I'll just mention it to you, is a vent condenser. Let me see if I seem like, did I have a no, I didn't have it. It's on my other computer. But a vent condenser, just a heat exchanger that you can put in there, run that steam through, and just condense it. And you could take your makeup water, your 70 degree makeup water, and run it through that thing and just do some preheat. Now, it depends on whether you do the blow down heat exchanger, whether or not you still have 70 degree water. You know, you may not, you know, if you've already done this other project. So sometimes you've got competing projects you know, that need the same resource to make them work. Okay, um, we're, we're gonna finish up steam here pretty quick. Uh, I may have a few more comments on this. And yes, I will finish my homework assignment as well. 
And you guys, if you haven't sent it to me, you need to get it in. But I'm primarily interested that you kind of understand the concepts and what it is we're trying to do here to save some money for this company. Okay? Y'all have a great uh, day today, and I will see you on Thursday. Yes, sir. Oh, hold on, just say, let me stop her recording. Um.